Good morning. Welcome to TMI Socials. So, um, how's the weather treating you this morning? Interestingly, on the social media street, hashtag raining is trending. And of course, right there in River States, where recently three commissioners have resigned, is also trending as well as hashtag weekday is trending. Well, away from all of that down here on TMI Socials, welcome on board again. I am Anwoluapo Stevens, your social media guide. Now this morning we kickstart on a foreign gist as it was trending on social media, hashtag Slovakia, as Slovakia Prime Minister Robert Fico was on Wednesday shot multiple times and rushed to the hospital with life-threatening injuries after a cabinet meeting, officials said, in an attack condemned by EU chiefs. Now, Fico, a populist leader accused of being Kremlin friendly has been prime minister since last year. Fico was shot multiple times, said a post on his official Facebook page. It says, and I quote, we confirmed the attack on the prime minister, police spokesman, new man told AFP. Now let's move over to um, Slovakia where it's all that happened. Okay. Moving over to how you have been reacting to this one on socials. This user says, stunned and saddened by the news from Slovakia, Prime Minister Robert Fico's courage in rejecting the WHO accord was admirable and now he's paying the price, wishing him a speedy recovery and strength to his family. May this senseless act of violence not silence the voices of truth and conviction. Another thought on this, deeply shocked at the news of the shooting at Slovakia's Prime Minister, Mr. Robert Fico, I strongly condemn this cowardly and dastardly act and wish Prime Minister Fico a speedy recovery. India stands in solidarity with the people of Slovak Republic. One more thought on this. Crusade says they are not playing nice and the globalists will not have it any other way. Time to say no to the globalist agenda. Well, wishing him a speedy recovery right here in Adult State. Now moving over down here in Nigeria, hashtag minimum wage was trending as the labor unions comprising the Nigeria Labor Congress and Trade Union Congress TUC have walked out of the ongoing minimum wage negotiation with the government and the organized private sector. Now angered by the 48,000 Naira proposal by the federal government as a national minimum wage, the labor unions described the offer as ridiculous. Now also to remind you before we move over to how you've been reacting to this, that on May Day, that's like May 1st of this year, it was in the news that the federal government has finally, you know, approved a new minimum wage but I said then the prize was not really out there. And also to let you know that Labour is actually crying for 615,000 Naira for the new minimum wage, um, you know, to kickstart right now in Nigeria. Well, if we could have a glimpse of what the president said that Joe Ogero would really appreciate it as we get to move over to how you have been reacting to this on socials. Now this user says, fuel went up by 300%, electricity up by 300%, transportation up 200%, and he goes on and on and on and says that, and the federal government is proposing 48,000 Naira minimum wage. Please just give your life to Christ now if you haven't. You can't, you know, go, go afford to be in hell twice. Okay, another reaction on this. 
Um, engineer Refat says any minimum wage less than 150k is sheer wickedness and unconsiderate. The 150k is just being considerate, not that it's even sufficient. She okay, another Warren on this as well. Leo is asking and saying it should be nothing less than 100k. Right. Well, we'll see how things eventually turn out. But now the question is, how much really would be enough, you know, to sequel everything happening in the country as regards the new minimum wage? Now, away from that to hashtag Mobad, as update from his, you know, whole dilemma has surfaced again online, as it says, a forensic scientist and pathologist from the Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, Professor Sunday Osiemi, has told the coroner inquiry into the cause of the death of late Nigerian singer Mobad that the results of an autopsy conducted on the diseased body has failed to ascertain the cause of his death. Now, he told the coroner, Magistrate Adedayo Shotobi, that this conclusion can be attributed to several reasons, one of which is that it took a long time, about 21 days before the autopsy was conducted, and by which time the body had decomposed. Let's move over to hear him verbatim on the story. According to him, the cause of death cannot be determined. Because he gave a lot of reasons. He said, by the time he conducted the test, the body had decomposed. And that it is not possible for them to determine the cause of death. So in summary, he's saying the cause of death cannot be what ascertained. Now when you say the cause of death cannot be ascertained, it means uh, it is suspicious. It is not clear. No particular reason. But it's, he, he also went for that to say that uh, it, could be, it may be attributed to reaction to certain drugs administered on him before he died. Again, again. Moving over to taking your thoughts on the story. Now this user says, a body can be exhumed and you can still find the cause of the death. There is no doubt about that. Even some that have spent years can be exhumed and you still find the cause of the death if you do a proper forensic autopsy. Another thought, justice was delayed and still denied. This is so unfair. It is well. Everyone should chat, learn one or two things from Mobaz Mata. Irel, meaning peace. Okay, another thought on this. Peaceful Buddy says, just to make sure you come from a good home, because at this point, his family failed him. SMH, shaking my head. Now, moving over to another story as well that made it in the news. The federal government has said it subsidized the cost of the 2024 Hajj pilgrimage with a sum of 90 billion naira. Now, Vice President Kashim Shatima disclosed this on Wednesday at the inauguration of the 2024 National Hajj operation held at the Sir Adamu Belo International Airport in Kebbi State. According to him, he says, and I quote, you may recall that this year we had a major challenge in announcing the final herd fair for the 2024 Muslim pilgrimage due to fluctuation in foreign exchange rates. End of quote. Of course, let's move over to your thoughts and reaction on this bit. Brimel says, what? We're still sponsoring people's heavenly race with national treasure? is asking and laughing at the same time. Now, moving over to another one. Um, this person says, well done, Mr. President. Nigerians are proud of you and their votes. 
I don't know if you've been sarcastic or something. But anyway, another thought or in this, another thought or in this deal. This guy, Olisa Emeka, says, Right on, Daddy, sir. They will help us pray for better health care, education, security, and electricity. Okay, uh, now finally, moving over to my final gist for this morning, where Nigerians are reacting to a viral video of Senator Ali Undeme, as he says, and I quote, Nigerian politicians' kind of corruption is people-driven. We steal and we share with the people. Take a listen. Before you come to us politicians, I know that is the direction you are going. We politicians, we as, even if you call us anything, if you compare us to all the corruption, that our own is a, a, a very small one. We, we, our corruption is uh, people-driven. You steal all the money, you go and share it with the people. If you don't, you are not coming back after four years. So that's the reason why most of you steal the money. No, no. Some will go and keep it. That's, there's no reason for stealing. I've been in the National Assembly. I can't say, you know, people will not look at you on the TV now and say, I'm a clean person. No. I have to say the truth. If death penalty is supposed to be included in corruption, I will support it. But you don't go, somebody that stole one million, you go and... And then somebody that was small, one billion, you go and... No, but I mean support of saying you have progressive. If you steal one billion, maybe you go to life imprisonment or imprisonment for 20 years. I support that. But if you go and steal, what, like some people are here in one trillion and the government's money, that means you have deprived so many people. No, that person should be. Hearing in verbatim from the horse's mouth, in quote, it says, you eat yours, I eat mine, and everybody's all good together. But how have you been reacting to this one on socials? Let's see. Okay, this user says, um, but let's speak the truth. He isn't lying. In Nigeria, a lot of people will not vote for you if you don't share money, especially party delegates. Facts only. And then Noisy Entertainment says, can you imagine what someone's father is saying on national TV? Chai. The person we do Nigeria don't go since. Okay, anyway, whatever that means. Another thought on this one. Still, our sweet tell says, our permanent senator, Ovanu de go transfer. He's been there since 1999. That's like 25 years ago. He's still telling the truth. And what can anybody do than to rant online? Continue, dear politicians. One more thought on this as we get to wrap up TMI socials this morning. Now, Ovie Clarkson said, a thief is a thief. Doesn't matter the motive. Well, sadly, tell me about it. Um, dilemma right here in Nigeria. Well, Daniel uh, Praise. Absolutely. Uh, I know that's lovely. But however, we must give it to Senator Ndume. He's oh, been really? He's been there for ages. And to our next time, this man is saying the truth. <laughs> He just told us now that politicians steal, so share. So it's like sharing formula. But however, how will the country grow? Mm -hmm. How will the country progress mm -hmm. if politicians keep stealing and recycling the money back to their followers? You remember some of them will need to get there mm -hmm. and service those who took them there. So it's a win-win thing for the politicians. But that's a very bad one. The country cannot grow. Are we still sending people to go and pray? Well, we have serious issues hitting Nigeria back, left, right, center. I don't think at this point we should be using uh, taxpayers' money to send people to go for Hajj, send people uh, to go for uh, Israel, go to Israel to pray. We mm -hmm. don't really need that again. We should grow beyond that. Take these monies and divert them to other sector of the economy. And for the issue of Mubad, well, it's disheartening to know that uh, we don't really have what it takes to do forensic investigation in other clients. People who died 25 years ago, they still assume them hmm. and get to know the roots why they died. But here now we are saying someone who died just less than a month or three months or so, they say you can't conduct autopsy, Nigeria. Where Which are we way going? Nigeria? Which way to go? Well, I know we'll be coming back on Monday for a fresh edition on this segment here, my social. Let's quickly get to the seat of power where Tululokbe is actually standing by arranging his things to leave the studio because Lawrence Fred will be hitting the airwave in a moment uh, for the program Business Rendezvous. Tolu look, but we need to go now.
it's in the airwave in a moment uh, for the program, Business Rendezvous. Tony Lockman, we need to go now. Uh, it's been an interesting time right there, especially with some stories from the social media. Good job it's for Manuela for TV. Moment. Yes, for the the program, program, business program. Program. We need to go now. Uh, it's been an interesting time right there. I feel that with some stories from the social media. Good job for Manuela for TV. Moment. Yes, for the program, business rendezvous. Okay, thank you so much, Tolu. That's how far we can go. Uh, up next is Business Rendezvous with uh, Lawrence Osifo. Thank you, everyone, for being part of the train. I am Daniel Price. Osa Debame.